WBNE. Howdy, Yokes. Before we get started today, we just want to let you know that this episode of Bacon and Eggs is brought to you by our patrons. We want to build this thing to be as big as it can be, and we want to make more podcasts for you, for free, but not for free for us. They're not free, but we can't do it alone. If you enjoy this episode and want more WBNE and more Bacon and Eggs, head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash bacon and eggs, where your support can change the amount of podcasts we have. You can birth new podcasts, like that's what I'm talking about, and Bagels, which comes out this Sunday. Whoa! Uh, and check out our new $10 tier, which grants you access not only to our bonus show, The Hash Browns, but you'll also get the unedited episodes of this show, Bacon and Eggs. So like after I finish this part, you can hear Ethan and I just sit awkwardly for a moment. You can hear all the behind the scenes moments that go into making an episode. We could really use your help to make this podcast the best it can possibly be. So thank you so much for donating, and thank you so much more for even listening. Howdy, Yokes, and welcome back to Big Internet Eggs. I'm Tyler Carlin. And I'm Ethan Edgehill. And today we're writing a book about ourselves. Or maybe we're just having it published for a friend. So chase the love of your life down before he gets on a train. And then don't even marry him. Because today we're bringing you... Little Women. Yeah, the most air horn appropriate movie that we've ever had <laughs> on the show. We are, we are joining coming this to you get... this summer, <laughs> Little Women. Two. We are even too little to wi- too little to women. Too little to women. Uh, uh, before we get started, we're joined this week by none other than the super talented and highly demanded guest and future WBNE host, Jordan Bulky. Welcome yeah. to the program. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, we're so excited that you're here. And I'm so excited that we could force another human being to pay money to see this movie. Honestly, uh, I, th- I don't think I was being forced to. <laughs> <laughs> But I would think, you have seen I think it what otherwise? He meant was there's that we're glad there's one more ticket bought for this movie because of this show. Mm. Yes. Um. Honestly, it, I think the deciding factor for me would be whether or not I'm gonna get to go home in January. Uh, I didn't get together with family for Christmas because nobody can travel around the holidays. But uh, my whole extended family is getting together in January, and my mom very much wants to see this movie, so I would have seen it with her. Um. But you guys gave me an excuse to see it even sooner. Ha ha. So now you'll see it twice i'm selling tickets yeah i'm a a ticket hawker (laughs) come on in come on tickets fucker can you sell me uh welcome down to the the movie dad i got a movie about four women and the mother come on down it's pretty good is is that your critics loved it (laughs) is that your ticket barker voice (laughs) is that your period voice for for this movie (laughs) that is i don't know come on down see see little women the first of its kind, Little Women. The fir- yeah, mm, uh, well, t- Tyler, um, <laughs> boy, never man, anything got, like it ever before. I've got some bad news for you on that front. Oh, nothing like this one. <laughs> nothing directed by Greta Gerwig. <laughs> she did Ladybird. Don't do Everybody oh, like Ladybird. Like <laughs> Everybody like Ladybird. <laughs> oh my God, we cannot do the episodes like this. <laughs> Came out on Christmas just four days ago. <laughs> I, we we can't do the episode like this, but Tyler, I promise you that there will be a character in our Dungeons and Dragons podcast that talks like that now. You have you have ramped fully off of like Carnival Barker into <laughs> into like I don't even know you were like four days ago, <laughs> four score and and, and ninety six hours ago. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this land a new nation and conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Because when you grow up in Illinois, you have to learn the Emancipation Proclamation. Do you know how many presidents are from Virginia? Because I do not. Yeah, but, but Illinois it's a is lot. the land of Lincoln who delivered the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay, okay. I'll, gr- I'll give you That's that one. also the Gettysburg Address. Yes. Very oh, good. Oh, God. Uh, yep. Mm, wish we could edit that one out. Oh, we can? <laughs> but You're we just won't. not going to. Thanks. No, it'll, Thanks, you, you'll get a great... When you grow up in Illinois, you have to learn the emancipate. I mean, the <laughs> Gettysburg Address. <laughs> yep, I know the words. Ninety nine percent evil. <laughs> oh goodness! Ninety nine percent evil, one percent hot gas. <laughs> <laughs> Directed by Greta Gerwig, released on Christmas just four days ago on a forty million dollar budget, made three hundred and eleven point nine million. No, Good no, God. no! Hold on, it did not. Wait do a that. second. It did no, not it do didn't. That. <laughs> 
that's the, that's the first day Star Wars take. Okay, or Jumanji, good Lord. the first week in Jumanji take or whatever. First week. Oh I don't know. goodness! Uh, I really got excited there. I was like, "What? This is true." Why are you looking that up? I will have you know that I went to one theater and they were like, yeah, "That showing at three forty is completely sold out. You'll have to go somewhere it's else." It's made thirty point two million worldwide. Thirty point two. I'm I'm certain this isn't in China. I'm positive. It's, I think it's like mostly only in the U.S. right now. Yeah, I'm I, almost certain. I mean, when I went to go see this movie, the the average age in the theater might have been sixty five. You know, it's crazy. Um, the theater that was sold out, that was the case. But the other theater that I went to, which was almost sold out, I walked in and we had to sit in the third row from the front, uh, and then people sat in front of us. Which I was like, "What is this? Do people go to the movies on Sunday? Is this is this a new thing?" Uh, but it was it was it was it was mixed ages, definitely all women, uh, and definitely all white, but full nonetheless. Tickets I was the sold. only person in the theater that was not apparently on a date at 3 40 p.m on friday there were there were there were a few guys there on on dates I although maybe they were the just as invested unoccupied or uh, like un, unaccompanied male in the I theater mean, josh went with me but i don't think he would have gone on his own under any circumstances i'm selling so many come on down little women <laughs> come come josh come you love, you love this Why, movie. Hey, you'll just love the tale of these three, <laughs> these four women. The dead sister. They're not Come particularly on, little. Wow! Spoilers immediately. I'll tell you. Yeah, well, th- th- okay, okay. Let's, let's talk about this podcast. for a second because it was a book that was written like 150 years ago. Fair. Have you read the book? I no. Have, I have not read the book. I've seen two of the movies, and I've watched the episode of Friends where Joey's like, I think Beth's really sick. She's going to die. And then he puts the book in the freezer. I just realized <laughs> that we've done none of the things that we normally do to start this podcast. There's no been no binary review. There's been no no okay. critical well, or positive we're, review. I'm we're, just we keep shut getting off right track now. because of Tyler's ridiculous uh, voice that he's doing. So I'm going to put this train women. back on rails. Um, I can, hold on. I could, I, could, I, could, I get a positive review. So either you, you, we did not do the, the score. The scores. Are, are those correct? I didn't know if they those were correct. Those are correct, yes. Actually, I've got them open. It's got a uh, 95% critic rating on Rotten Tomatoes and a 92% audience rating um, and a 91 on Metacritic. I think we're looking at a real Oscar contender here, Ethan. I think, I think we are as well. Um, Come on down and see Oscar contending oh, little women. Oh my God. <laughs> you won't believe what oh, the Lord Christy is my Lemire at Film Week. Want. He maketh me to lie down in green podcasts. <laughs> An absolutely lovely film that will make you feel so extreme. Extremely good Can walking out of it. Can we talk about this delightful movie and stop <laughs> meandering around your carnival barker voice? <laughs> Um, anyway, this is a this. Uh, I got a negative review from Louisa Moore of Screen Zealots, and she says anyone sentimental about the original source material should prepare for disappointment. And I haven't read the book, but I can't imagine that's the case. I, this person has a vendetta against Greta. I'll tell you that much. A vendetta, if you will. <laughs> oh God. Um, Tyler, do you have a positive review so we can get on with our? I reviews? did. I already read it. I already read it. Christy Lemire said it's an absolutely lovely film that will make you feel so extremely good walking out of it, which I wouldn't say. I felt. I don't think I walked out of this like what a positive film. But uh, I did. Well, I, the sister died, and then the guy married the sister. I don't know. Things did not go well for for uh, for young Joe March. Except she got her famous book. That's all she, she wanted. Get was her to famous be a famous book. author. Famous book with her name on it. Oh, with I know. Yeah, okay. with her name on it. J. L. Travers. I've. Uh, I've. Nope. So you said before we recorded, somebody told me there were seven versions of this movie. Yeah, that was me. Just I've never. Now. Yeah, it was well. Yeah, but the listener wasn't here for that. <laughs> uh, fun fact: I did not know that. Is I honestly, if somebody was like Little Women, I would have been like, oh, like the Pretty Woman sequel. There was I mean, a, not only was there this one, there was a, a one in two thousand eight. I mean, two thousand eighteen as well. What? This was the Shakespeare in Love Little Women, correct? What do you mean? Like Shakespeare in Love is about how like Romeo and Juliet was based on Shakespeare's life. That's this story, right? No, this is the story that's in the book. Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah. yeah. The book is about her writing a book? Yeah. yeah. Man. I have no idea. I mean, so it looks I like in, in 2018 they released a, possibly a made-for-TV movie that was an updated version because this is a group of f- five people around a television. Okay. So she was like a she was like a, 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 a comedy a writer. Yeah. A blogger. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I but mean, anyway. th- I've I've seen that happen uh, with with other sort of classic novels, if you will. Like Emma got remade into a, a YouTube series, as did Pride and Prejudice, um, both for modern Emma's times. Emma's coming both- back to theaters. Yeah. Um, I would like to read such a tale. It's been a uh, long time since I've read it. 
So the little the 2018 Little Women made 1.4 million dollars at the box office. Um, no idea. Clearly didn't do very well. Yeah, it got beat out by Smallfoot. Smallfoot. <laughs> oh God. I... According to this, said in the United States and Canada, Little Women was released alongside Smallfoot and projected to gross three to five million dollars from 643 theaters opening weekend. It ended up grossing just 747, finishing 16 at the box office. Well, and did you know that uh, Louisa May Alcott wrote sequels to Little Women? There's a sequel called Little Men and another one called Joe's boys which i believe talks about joe's sons i did, I did not know this i did not know that louisa may alcott wrote other books i also until i saw her name at the beginning of this movie thought the little women was by one of the brontes <laughs> that's or, a funny meta moment in that yes, movie yes it is and, and then she talks about the brontes and i was like hold oh, wait wait mm, well potentially potentially i also thought it was jane austen i think that was probably what it was yeah Makes sense. You know, Pride and Prejudice, Little Women, they're basically the same thing, I think. Yeah, it feels somewhat similar. I get it. Get it. No, but yeah, so I, I, I've i seen uh, two other versions of this before. I think I've seen the original with Katherine Hepburn, and I've seen the one with uh, Christian Bale playing Laurie. So whatever. I think they won't have Winona Ryder in it. Oh, Winona Ryder's so good. I did decide while this movie was playing that Laura Dern should be in every movie moving <laughs> forward. I've just decided that she improves everything. I mean, she is great, but that movie yeah. also had, had Kirsten Dunst in it. And I don't like her. I don't understand why people don't like Kristen Dunst. I, I genuinely don't get it. I've just never liked her. She's fine. I don't understand. Have you seen her in things that aren't Spider-Man? Wasn't Melancholia. she the lead in Bring It On? Yes, which I loved. She was yeah. bad in Bring It On, though. But Have you seen good. Bring It On? Nah. Let me take a look at I'm her. Not, I'm not a, Chris, a Kirsten Dunst fan. I mean, I, I that Marie Antoinette movie was not yeah, great. I'm not. I don't, she's not my favorite. You going so far as to say uh, I've seen Hidden Figures. I thought that was deliver d d d d delicious, uh, <laughs> s scrumptious. Dang it, I can't. Del delightful. <laughs> I thought that was scrumptious. <laughs> but anyway, she's, how are you she's, doing, friend? She's not in this this movie, and the cast in this movie is phenomenal. Oh and my gosh, yes. So let's talk about the cast of characters in this movie. Let's you know talk about I... the fact. Let's talk about the fact real quick that okay. So this is a spoilers full podcast. You know, we already I think we already said that because Tyler was just like. Oh, or Beth dies. <laughs> uh, which Beth does indeed die. That is a fact. Everybody uh, dies she eventually. Gets scarlet fever for like seven years? No, she gets it. She gets better than she gets it again. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I understood. She like got a flare up that killed her. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I don't think she ever got better. But she kind of did. I mean, she was out planting flowers for the wedding and doing all that jazz. Well, she never left home, did she? No. No. Yeah. But Swar they're, they're going to give, so give Emma Watson an Oscar nomination for this, and they're not going to give one to... Uh, woman whose name I can't pronounce, who is the lead, who plays Joe, uh, and I'm not even going to try. Um, Ronan Miss, the Accuser. Miss, Miss Ronan, and they're also not going to give one to Florence Pugh, and it's a tragedy. Yeah, Florence Pugh, like... I, did you guys... Did she was did the you most not compelling... Laura Dern? I, I, every single actor in this movie was exceptionally compelling, but especially all of the female actors. Like, just all of the daughters were phenomenal. Meryl Streep was amazing. Laura Dern just, was amazing. Yeah, so good. It was yeah, no, so good. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, the the I, I the guy is the only thing I didn't like about this movie. He what? felt too much um, Five Hundred Days of Summer to me. Like I um, don't. I think you're giving Timothy Chalamet a lot a lot of credit uh, comparing him to Joseph Gordon-Levitt. There, I, I don't know if she's giving the credit to Timothy Chalamet as compared to Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I think she's saying that like he feels he deserves this like manic pixie dream girl, even though she's made it clear in their whole relationship that he's not in that she's not. Yeah, interested. and I'm just saying he's freaking creepy. Well, he's the neighbor. No, just him as an actor i cannot I, abide this kid i, I want him to stop know being if in we things. have the same opinion about 500 days of summer because it creepy then again so is um scott pilgrim which i just recently watched for the first time so it's fine Ooh, i'm curious your issue with scott pilgrim any movie that puts the awkward kid the, the awkward boy uh trying to get with who they believe to be their dream girl um and making them so oblivious to her lack of interest Ramona, I don't know that Scott and Ramona are ever as interested in each other as the third party would suggest. Like, I think Scott obviously likes her, but he's also, like, pretty content with Knives there for a moment, and then... 
he doesn't ever feel like he he gets what he deserves at least the way i see it is that like scott gets thrown into this situation with ramona way more deeply than he ever anticipated it to be but then he just continues to go on because he doesn't know it's like the evan hansen thing he doesn't know how to like stop it he doesn't know how to stop fighting the exes either way i i bear no particular love for 500 days of summer uh i don't necessarily think it was a great movie when it came out um and it definitely hasn't really aged well but i love joseph joseph gordon levitt regardless and i think he did a good job in the movie and he's just generally i would prefer him to be in things over timothy chalamet i mean that's fair but also i feel like there's probably a decade of age difference at this point i'm not saying he should have been in <laughs> I'm, I'm no by no means am i saying that he should have been laurie in uh little women i just don't want timothy chalamet to keep being in things i don't it looks understand like why is... people like this kid so much i believe he is a product of greta gerwig um, uh no so he is the, re- he is the heart this throb. position re- recast this this character for us ethan I don't know. See, that's the thing is I don't know the names of any of these actors that are under the age of like 30 anymore. I don't know what the kids are doing. Are these people supposed to be kids? Because none of these characters ever looked, except for Florence Pugh and Eliza Scanlon, none of them ever looked seven years younger. I, Amy's I transformation from young Amy to old Amy was like, oh yeah, that's a that's a different woman entirely. But until Ronan the Accuser cut her hair, I was, and, and be obviously because the lighting changed in the old and new scenes. But like outside of that, I could not tell a difference in in her appearance. So Timothy Chalamet is 24. Okay. And I'm just not clued into that whole group of male actors at all. Like, I couldn't pick Noah Centineo out of a line of one was, person. I was about to say, do you want Noah as the- Is he the- Okay, so he's Peter Kravinsky, right? Into yeah, all the boys, all the boys, all the boys I love before. before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so he would have done a much better job. Disagreed. I don't like this kid. Man. I do not understand why he's like white boy of the decade all of a sudden. How old is Tom Holland? Is Tom Holland young enough to have been that character? Uh, yes, yeah, Tom Spider-Man. Holland is young enough to have been that character because Tom Holland is the like the other side of the argument of who is hotter, Timothy Chalamet or Tom Holland. Tom I, Holland. I've got this straight from the kids. The kids TM. Yeah, the kids TM. I, I sought out the opinion of a youth um, <laughs> after I saw this movie and to which I said, why do people like this guy? I do not dislike this guy. I, th- I, I genuinely liked him. I'm surprised that you, you didn't like yeah, him Yeah, no, he so was much. the worst thing about the movie for me. Oh, I disagree. I did feel like he was supposed to be in the seven years later version. He was supposed to be this like alcoholic bad boy. And I was like, nah, he's just not. Dude, you're... <laughs> yeah. He's complicated. In, in, in the fact that like even in this story of like how great these girls are, these women are, it, it's still like it comes down to like them fighting, not fighting over, but them pining over the same kid, the same man. And it just seems like a, such a strange thing to happen in this movie. I think I think it's a weird love triangle thing because Joe, I guess in the end is like yeah i'll i'll take laurie but then she doesn't and she's like happy about it but amy's challenge is that laurie is most interested in joe i mean would you want to have been your significant other's second choice to your sibling i, I mean was. no but if i was amy i probably <laughs> wouldn't have gone for him because of that I- I, I would agree. I would agree. I think... I probably uh, would have just married Fred. He seemed like a nice enough guy. Fred did seem like a nice enough guy, especially if it's a financial decision. I do think Lori would be more likely to let Amy continue to paint than Fred would have been. Fred was always more of a, like, a Daphne and Velma team up kind of guy, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. I just don't... I don't get the... I don't... I don't... That's the whole part of the story that doesn't make sense to me is, like, why Amy and Laurie ended up together. I mean, because she loved him from the beginning. For sure. Yeah. But... Although they, they say that, and I like as, as soon as they say that in the movie, she, they're like, you know, oh yeah, Amy always loved Lori. But like up until that moment, that hadn't been the case. And then there's yes, all of it these was. scenes. Did you yes, not it was. See, yeah, 100%. The very first time that they met, she said, hi, I'm Amy, and had these big doe eyes at him and just stared and drew him and was like, he was the only one that she was ever watching yeah, ever. She she found her mans right then and there and was just like, okay, well, this is it. Got to figure this one out. And then he was all like, oh my God, but Joe. But Joe, geez. She's so manic pixie. We're not and, assigning and, those roles in this movie. That is not the way this is going to work. Um, <laughs> but we also saw, like, the moment where it changed for Lori. Um, that moment of, like, when he started looking at her in a different light and maybe less like a little sister. For sure. And we also saw him get, you know, just absolutely crushed by Joe. Yeah. Oh, jo- Joe's whole speech there. She's so in her own headspace. Oh, God. I mean, like, obviously you don't have to marry somebody you don't love. Of course. Uh, or you don't want to marry. But it's seemed like she had been like she rehearsed that she yeah she imprisoned her own mind against 
the notion of that it was marriage. even possible. Yeah. yeah, she like hated the idea of marriage so much that you know she was sitting there brushing her hair or whatever, rehearsing this conversation about we shouldn't be together, we'd kill each other. Right, because she says she tried to love him, she tried to love him, but she didn't take for a minute his his views and his values into the situation, and that kind of frustrated me. But he also where... didn't offer her anything. Like he wasn't interesting to her the same way that uh, that anybody else would. Like she was still, you know, he didn't. Uh, what am I trying to say? Did he? I don't know. Because to me, it was like there's no man that could ever be for this woman except this man who was a part of her sibling acting troupe. But then she meets the professor and he's the first person to ever not just like, I, obviously I don't particularly again, I don't understand why she went back to him because he was really kind of a jerk to her. That's the point. Why yeah. would she go back to him? Um, That's why the book doesn't make any sense. No, I mean it does. I just, I, I, I don't I haven't read the book, but it feels like, and I'd be interested to see Jordan's take on this one because it, to me, the first scenes with, with the professor, whose name I can't remember now, Fr- Friedrich, mm-hmm. um, don't sort of line up with who he ends up being like I think they did too good of a job at selling me on why Joe was upset the the frustrating part about uh, uh, actually Jordan I'll let you speak but I do have some thoughts here um I mean it's been so long since I've read the book I feel like I'm not actually a good um person to make these comparisons. oh no I'm, I'm just asking you about the movie about how you felt about oh. it in the movie um because that's what I'm saying is I don't have the archetype for the book so I don't know what it's like but I'm just talking about it as what I saw in the movie I I mean you make a type of art and the people around you tell you how much they like it and if there's something that would be not good about it like it's it's really hard for the people close to you to be like hey I don't like this but then this guy just like walked in and was the first person in her life who was like hey um no what I thought was interesting about that conversation was he reads the story and he's like I don't think this, like, to me, what he was saying was she didn't let him respond. But basically, he says, I don't think this is good. And she, like, explodes. And I think that, at least this is what I saw, is he would have followed that up with, I think you could be writing more things you're interested in rather than what would sell. Because I think what you're interested in would sell. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, I could, like, it was like she was, you know... It's like Spanish was a second language and she was writing in Spanish instead of English. She she wasn't writing the the thing that she would be best at writing. Right. She sold out to something that would be interesting as opposed to something that she was passionate about. Right. Yeah, no, I, I for sure get that. It just almost like, it definitely came from a, a, to me, they sold it a lot on the idea that it came from this place of like, who is he even to say this to her? Like it definitely, yeah. there's a little bit of not my, my vision being clouded or anything like that, but just thinking of it from this lens of like, you know, let we, we need to, 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 you know, he never really checked his privilege, basically. He was this guy, this, this fancy writer guy coming in and being like, well, this is, you know, not good. So I'm just going to tell you it's not good. And I think they did a really good job of selling it on that and her being mad about that because obviously she's sitting here and there's this man she barely knows that's telling her her art is bad, but you know, who comes to it not from a guise of like, I want to sell it, but from like, I'm your friend. And she doesn't feel like they're friends. Yeah. I How was he introduced? Did I look away from the screen for a moment? Or did he just- He lived in, in the boarding house. Of- he told her that she was on fire. Oh, that was the same guy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I missed that detail. That, that did not- connect for me. He invited and- her to go to the theater. No, I thought he. she went to the theater with uh, Lori and the uh, Lori's tutor. Not that theater. Yeah, different theater. Okay. Like he- right at the beginning. Okay. So she I was on not fire together, and but- scribbling and he clearly already knew her and invited her to the theater and she said no, but then she was there anyway. But she's yeah. standing in the back. Right. And so he wrote her this letter that was like... And I did like how they they did the letter narration in this movie. In this oh, movie, yeah. I always love when they do the thing where the pe- person like reads it standing in the room. Oh. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Yeah, uh, and so you know he basically reads writes her this creepy letter of like, hey, I saw how much you enjoy the theater. I'd really like to see what you're writing. And then she's like, I mean, okay, sure. And he's just like, yeah, this is bad. And she gets mad and, and goes away. And I, I feel like that's reasonable. I don't think she necessarily let him finish, but I also don't think it's like an important narrative that she needed to let him finish. I agree. Because he's a strange man who's telling a woman what to write. No, I, I definitely agree with that. I just think he had more value to add. And I think when he rever- rehearsed in his brain how to deliver this message, he did it poorly. And well, as a result, didn't get to deliver the message he wanted to. And she definitely finding the value in him. But, right. you know, I, I and I feel like there's probably definitely more to the story. That's one of those one of those pieces of the story that probably is more there that we than we saw in the movie um, to sort of tie those two things together. But him kind of showing back up caught me off guard for sure. Same. I, I did not remember. Really, I didn't remember more than like character names and basic overall story, but I did not remember him showing back up. Well, she doesn't marry him. Not in this movie anyway. Yeah. And it, it, two little two women, she'll marry him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's little men. I'm excited for little women Tokyo Drift. What is little men about? 
about? Because I don't. I, that doesn't sound interesting to me at all. I feel like little men might. <sighs> Does she have a bunch of sons? It might actually be about Lori and Amy's kid. I, I don't remember. Oh, we're about to find out. Um. Uh. So it's about it's about um Joe's students. Joe's students. Yes. That's fun. Yes. The book recounts six months in the lives of students at Plumfield Plumfield, oh a school run God. by German professor Friedrich and Miss Josephine Bear. Bear. Yeah, because she marries him. Because she marries oh, him. Oh, right. That's the narrative. They made it into three movies, not like a trilogy. Like it has been made into a movie three times. <laughs> they made it into a trilogy. <laughs> I can't either. And then Joe's Boys is about something else. Yep, I'm looking that up now. Joe's Boys is the sequel to Little Men. Oh. Follows the lives of the Plumfield boys who are introduced in Little Men, particularly Tommy, Emil, Demi, Nat, Dan, and Professor Bears, and Joe's sons, Rob and Teddy. Oh, she named a kid Teddy? That's so oh, cruel. That's so weird. Oh, Louisa, what are you doing? The ending of this... Nope. Okay, so I'm not saying it's bad by any means, and I'm not just con con trying to continue to criticize things here. Um, You know, I feel like... It, I recently heard it some where the people have a much easier time about talking about what they didn't like in movies that they loved and talking about what they did like in movies that they hated. Um, and I definitely loved this movie, but the ending is kind of a cop out. How so? Go on. Just, I don't, I don't like that she added to the end of the book. But how, how did the, what did she add? So she added the story of, of her and Friedrich because the book wasn't done apparently until she met the man. I yes. mean, it was a, it was a period piece. Is this not a true story? I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> it just kind of, it just kind of pissed me off because it was just set up of like, you know, her, her leaving the office and him saying, if you're going to write a book about a woman, she either needs to be married by the end or dead. It's the same thing. And then she goes and shows him the book and he loves it and his kids love it. And he's all just like, well, what happens at the end? And then she tells him something and he's like, no, 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 but she has to be married. And it's still, she ends up like, you know, writing the end of it where she falls in love with the guy. And that just to me kind of left me the wrong way. I mean... All three I wanted of her, her other sisters ended up married, married, and dead. Cool. Yeah, but Brutal. she wasn't married, and the book's about her. <laughs> I felt like it was, it still came back to, if you want to, like Meryl Streep's character was like, women can't make their own success. Like, you're not going to succeed on your own. And it came down to, you're not harming your integrity by writing a fictional version of yourself getting married. You're harming your integrity by getting married yourself. See, but I don't. I think that Joe did accomplish the things she wanted to. She got the book with her name on it. She made a school. No, I agree. I, I am agreeing with that point. And she didn't need the man to do any of those things. So then getting the man is just like, guess, yes, I'm too good. And no, I got the man too. But she did need the man to sell the book is the problem. She didn't need the man. She didn't have to actually marry him. She just had to write her characters marrying him. But she could only write what she could only write well when she's writing what happened. She doesn't marry the dude. Okay. She does though. In yeah, we so the one thing that I wonder if it was an error or on purpose was at the train station, we see them go in for the kiss twice at two different camera angles. And I'm wondering if that's supposed to be them going in for the kiss in the book and then them going for in for the kiss on real life and like differentiating the two, but like it did happen in both places and that's, ways. See, that's what I thought as well, because there are no accidents in a movie that includes uh, like speed ramps in a in a in a period piece. There are no accidents in a Greta Gerberg film. There there are lots of uh, things that uh, probably would be better off called accidents. Go on. This is a uh, this is a the mo one of the most so uh, story aside because I loved everything about the story, the acting, the costuming, the setting, uh, the the all the actors, everything. But this this has some incredibly questionable cinematography. Did you think so? I thought the cinematography yeah, no, was yeah, excellent. No, uh, no, the cinematography was it showed absolute flashes of some of the greatest cinematography we could ever see and I think that within the next five years Greta Gerwig will direct a movie that will define a generation and this is not it. <laughs> what? Was it Lady Bird? No, it's not Lady Bird. Lady Bird has the same problems. There should not be speed ramps in this movie. Google speed ramps for the so, like, at home. So, so, so the, what that means is when in the first scene where Joe leaves the uh, the freaking publishing house and she's running down the street it's that great side shot you know where, where she, we're on the sidewalk running with her and she's running down the other sidewalk and we pass between carriages and everything and it zooms in and then it slows gradually down to like Matrix bullet time for four seconds and then speeds back up for no reason. I thought the cinematography in this movie was great. There's I, that scene. You can't just, you know, you can't just write that off everything I'm saying. You can't write it off with just saying, I thought it was great. I That did not pull me out of it. I had it no issue with that. The there were so many it shots in the first act. It did pull me out of it. That shot did bother me, actually. 
There was many shots in the first act, especially, that I thought were some of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. Like when um, when we walk away from Laurie and we see Joe in the window, in the attic, from the up angle, and then everything changes except Joe. And it's the same Joe in a different window in a different city. That was beautiful. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. But then it also takes them like 14 cuts to get out of a carriage. I don't understand. There was a shot like, <coughs> that blew my this mind. Could have been, on the... Did you guys see the favorite? Mm -mm. No, I did not This could have to. been the favorite. Like this, this absolutely like undescribably beautiful movie but with this this could have been that movie with a story you could actually follow because the favorite is utter nonsense <laughs> it's it's like full on like art film like you're not supposed to understand it but there was there were scenes there were shots in this movie that definitely took me out of it multiple multiple times but that's a that's a purely like just sort of not a storytelling standpoint like a filmmaking standpoint i'll tell you one thing i i really enjoyed this movie i did not enjoy this movie 95 percent. oh this is the best movie that came out this year i just i wouldn't like, agree like i not you know i know that you're on a kick of like oh we can't assign objectivity to anything all of a sudden i'm but, not like, i'm not on that kick you are you've been tweeting about it i think if you read my tweets i wouldn't You'll notice I didn't, I would never have said that. You can assign objectivity whatever you want. I just didn't think, like, I I know that this is going to be an Oscar nom, and I know that it's, it's going to be a part of that conversation, and I hope it beats things like Rocket Man, uh, because I, it really is genuinely excellent. But it, it, it to me, like, I didn't walk out of the theater like, this is one of the best movies I've seen this year. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't get not walking out like that. I don't I understand. I mean, I really, really loved it. I, I saw a lot of good movies this year. Ooh, like what? Endgame came out this year. I, right? So good. Obviously, it, in terms of like art world pinky up standards, this is this is more what the the film community but wants no, than it's, Endgame. It's, it's not even that. It's like there are so many so many holes you could poke in Endgame, and it divided a community. Endgame didn't. People liked Endgame pretty mm -hmm. universally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they stated it after that. They what? The community completely turned on it after that. I that I, that I missed. I know the people. The community turned on Star Wars. No, they no turned on Endgame. I mean, people are people are still to this day mad about every single storyline in Endgame. Any time, every ending. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna please everybody. But it was a movie that I liked. So when I say, you know, whether or not it was the best movie that I saw in theaters this year, it has a lot to compete with for me personally. Yeah. Oh, I would agree. I, Endgame still tops my list. I don't oh, know. Not, I would have I, to sit I, down. I didn't like. I didn't like Endgame better than Star Wars. Sorry. It, it also <laughs> occurs to me that that this may is this the first episode of 2020? It is. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. So so like when we say this year what we really mean is 2019 yes yeah, of course this is a 2019 <laughs> movie it was it was put in under the wire for that oscar nomination Ooh, just barely and it'll get it it'll it, it'll, 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 it'll have it. a variety of it. nominations there'll be at least one best supporting actress and one best picture and one best director do you think it'll have best lead actress uh i i wouldn't be surprised yes, i thought she I, did it, it excellent will, it will be emma watson i mm. it will be emma watson i don't think you're right if, if anybody gets a nomination from this any of the girls it will be emma watson She's the name. Oh, I disagree. I, I, don't I think feel like Florence Pugh did, did just such a. Big I feel job. like you guys are giving the Academy a lot of credit all of a sudden. <laughs> mm, that's. Fair. I just didn't think Emma that's Watson what I'm was saying. that I'm good. Not, I'm not sitting here saying like, obviously I think Florence Pugh deserves, as far as I've seen, deserves the best, at least best supporting actress out of any movie I've seen this year. Now it'll almost certainly go to somebody I've never heard of in a movie I didn't see <laughs> because it always goes to somebody I've never heard of in a movie I didn't see. To be fair, now I am even more looking forward to. Um, the Black Widow movie to see more of Florence Pugh. You know, it's crazy. I was watching this movie and and like, obviously she was perfect in the role. She did absolutely wonderful. I did feel like uh, she didn't have the... This is this is a weird, weird nitpicky thing. I felt like her bone structure was different. It was much more like naturally contoured. And I felt like this is a girl that plays cheerleaders in movies about high school. So I looked up like her IMDb history and she absolutely does not. She does like strict Shakespearean films. Like King Lear, Lady Macbeth, uh, Midsummer. Amazing. Yeah, like that's what she's been in. I, so like I, I was so Midsummer. wrong. <laughs> I loved all of her little moments. Like like when she was futzing with her nose just all the time was the best background acting I've ever seen. Oh, she lived this part more more so than any of the rest of them did, for sure. Um, I mean that was the role that uh, that made it for me. Yeah, she was very good. Also, I, I didn't I, like when she burned that book. I was very sad about that. I mean, yeah, you're supposed to be. Yeah, yeah you're sucked. supposed to feel for Joe. Joe is. It's about Joe. So like it's it's always tricky in an ensemble cast, but it is about Joe. You are supposed to sympathize with Joe. It just wasn't very nice. No, it wasn't. But she was also like a child. Yeah, and she was thirteen ish. Man, none of them ever looked thirteen in this movie. I mean, at the end, she's supposed to be twenty. Oh gosh. Yeah. 
Oh gosh. See, well, when yeah, you that... get the when you get the same actors to play the kids and that are also play the kids grown up, it's tough. You know, it's tricky. I did think they. I thought specifically with her, they made a, they did a good job of making her look younger. It just just I allow for that suspension of disbelief and just just buy into yes, this this character is actually thirteen to eighteen. Now this. As far as visual storytelling goes, this was some of the best visual storytelling I've seen because I never was in doubt as to which time period we were in. Ever. Oh, it took me a while to figure it out. I was in it from the beginning. Every scene that was orange is old, and every scene that was not orange is new. Yeah, I I know that, but it still took me a while to get to get adjusted. Fun oh. fact, it took me a while to get adjusted too because the really? theater that I was at had the exit door with the bright red exit sign above it that was so bright that anytime the screen had anything deeper than like a medium navy, it was just in a red hue for like the right two thirds of the screen. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. It that was sucks like, so hard. This is why I, that I don't go to that theater. Which theater did you go to? Uh, Tanglewood. Oh yeah. That's where I was. I don't prefer now that, theater, that Yeah, I... now that, uh, that Regal has invented the Regal Unlimited Pass or whatever it is, I'm done with AMC Bye. completely. Yeah, done completely. Come on down, see Little Women. <laughs> oh Tyler, my god, I didn't Tyler know you loved this too. movie. <laughs> you love Little Women, it's so good. Yas. Okay, now oh. you're sounding a little bit like, um, like Hugh. Yas, darling, yas. Yas. <laughs> you don't think Little Women is divine? Big you summer blowout. A big summer blowout. You won't believe what happens to Beth. <laughs> 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 big summer blowout on her. <laughs> <laughs> God, Tyler. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome my, back my to Skype Bacon and Eggs. messed up during that, so I don't know what you just said. I'm going to have to listen eventually, but <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> just be oh, grateful. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway. Be grateful. Are we, are we, are we back at full strength now? I, I'm back at full strength. I found some O'Keefe's he- healthy feet. My feet are dry and cracked, and this is supposed to help. <laughs> what, <laughs> was that your podcast emergency? Was that you needed foot lotion? <laughs> You wouldn't believe it if I told you. My the space between my toes was bleeding. <laughs> Tyler, uh, <laughs> what is wrong with you? Space between. <laughs> Do men just like not take care of themselves physically at all? I'm doing that right. I'm doing this in the podcast. I'm taking care of myself physically. What do you do men not take care of themselves? I sell things for feet for a living, and this has been a problem for a long time, and now I'm working on fixing it. Okay, this podcast is brought to you by O'Keefe's Healthy Feet. No, it's no, not. No, it's not. No, no free for ads. Your nast- for your nasty feet. For your nasty, nasty feet. Ethan, I don't man. know if that sounded like we said it in sync to you, but it did to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be it'll be in sync. Don't worry, it, it'll get it'll get pushed into sync. Um. Anyway, yeah. No so I, I thoroughly enjoyed the aspect of like, and I'm always fascinated when they do stuff like that. And then I go and find out that movies are shot on film because I'm like, man, they like hard white balanced this, and that's so crazy to me. Was Just this movie shot on film? Because like every yeah, obviously this movie shot on film. Yes, it's, obviously it's a period piece. Let's be real. I don't think I knew that it was shot on film because I don't think I know that like I wouldn't know what to look for. Oh, I mean I. Just just go to the IMDb page and find out what they did with did it with. Oh, okay. I mean, I could sort. I, 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 from using film more and more, I've sort of figured out what to look for. But yeah, no, this was shot on, on Kodak film. Oh, definitely. Quick yeah, question. for sure. Quick but, question, Ethan. What'd you say? This movie was shot on film, correct? Yes. I said yes. Okay, that was my question. Oh, yeah. No, actually, it wasn't my question, but I don't remember what it was, so I wanted to make a joke. Oh, I'm on... Never. I was... Uh, I got confused because I didn't realize that I switched over to the IMDb, IMDb page for Midsummer, and uh, I thought that all of a sudden it wasn't shot on film anymore. Oops. That one girl from this movie that we all like, she was the lead in Midsummer, but none of us saw it, so none of us were like, oh, that's the... That's Danny. Yeah, we weren't... It was none of us. Yeah, no, I know. I literally said that while you were d- talking over me at one point. Oh, nice. Go me. That I need to, <laughs> I said I needed to see Midsummer because she was the lead in that movie and I like her. I also like her. She's very good. Does not play teenage cheerleader bully. Although she might in Midsummer. I don't know what it's about. <laughs> A couple a travels whole lot of to Sweden to visit a rural hometown's fabled Midsummer Festival. Uh, what begins as an idyllic retreat quickly devolves into an increasingly violent and bizarre competition at the hands of a pagan cult. Yeah, what? I was going to say that. That I think is the sentence that you were looking for out of the two of those. <laughs> Are you yeah, like, like are you not aware of this movie, Jordan? I have not heard of this movie. Oh man, this made oh, a this splash. Is, yeah, this was film Twitter's <laughs> child for the year. For, yeah, this was the, for the year. Cool. I mean, I'll look it up. Would be crazy if Florence Pugh got both Oscars. 
Would be crazy if I got an Oscar. You got to make a movie first. I don't. I just got to keep hawking them, and eventually I'll get a lifetime achievement award. Achievement? Achievement. I don't. I don't think that's how it works. It's an right? Oscar made of cheese. Quick question: <laughs> If the Oscar was made of cheese, what type of cheese would it be made of? This isn't a joke. I um, just wanted the silly answer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Like what? I mean. What is the most cinematic cheese? Let me Google that real quick. (laughs) I mean, weirdly, cheddar makes sense because of color, but I'm trying to think of like what else, like a a golden cheese that that is hard enough to hold its shape and structure. Brie Larson is a cheese and also has an Oscar. I had baked brie, baked brie for dinner. I had a turkey brie and apple sandwich for lunch. Uh, I haven't had. You went to Panera. I did not. I no, went you to made it at home? on the rise. Um... Oh, I definitely didn't make it at home. What are you insane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ethan, Although actually, I do have brie at the house. I don't have turkey or, or apples, but I, I do have brie. So you're halfway there. Uh, I do, yeah. No, with no surprise, what uh, you get um, absolutely useless results when you type in what is the most cinematic cheese to Google. Camembert. It sounds fancy. <laughs> oh yeah, probably. But actually, smells gross, right? Can you think of a movie named after a cheese? <laughs> what movies can you change one word to cheese or a type of cheese and improve the title? <laughs> Toy cheddar. <laughs> Little cheese curds. <laughs> There's actually a delish.com uh, article about this very feat. It says this is what happens when you add cheese names to movie titles. But it's not It's not over. Uh, it's not opening. But the number one that I can see from here is the Provolone Ranger. Oh, I get it. Provolone Lone Ranger. Ranger. That's pretty Ranger. great. That's, that's, that's great. pretty good. Uh, Who played the Lone Ranger? It was the Winklevoss twins, right? Yeah, it was Army Hammer. Army <laughs> Hammer. <laughs> the Winklevoss twin. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, the, let's see. Uh, Harakata and the Philosopher's Stone. Nice. Uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Asiago. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. I still to know what you did last summer. Gouda will hunting. Oh, uh, boo. Despicable Who Brie. Gouda as a pun? There's something about dairy. Oh, he's, God. He's just not that into fondue. The God Feta. <laughs> 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 Million Dollar Baby Bell. <laughs> 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 The Curious Queso of Benjamin Button. These are getting better. (laughs) The Curious Queso. Parmesan Tucker Must Die. Fantastic Breeze and Where to Find Them. Yes. Yes. Star Wars Return of the Jedi. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh, man. Thank you, Delish.com, for that that hearty chuckle. Hey, no free ads. (laughs) Gouda Busters? What did you say? Gouda Busters. Gouda Busters. I love that. Oh, speaking of Gouda Busters, next week on Bacon and Eggs, we're covering the original Ghostbusters. Speaking of Ghostbusters, did you guys get a uh, pre-roll ad? The new for trailer? The new- I don't yeah. even want to talk about it. Finn Wolfhard should not be allowed to be in Ghostbusters. Sorry. Why? Go on. Because he's in Stranger Things. And because because they have because Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters costumes. exist in Stranger Things. I but he's an actor. Yeah, it I know. Also I know. But like, you gotta keep the you so gotta keep he, the things yeah. separate. You gotta keep the timeline pure. <laughs> Finn Wolfhard should not be allowed to be in Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is too Stranger Things adjacent for him to be in it. It's not fair. And like, there so are other it, kids that exist. It chapter two and it, the first one are both two stranger than Jason. I mean, yeah, I, I agree Millie with Bobby that. Brown I also don't was think in the Godzilla movie that looked like it should have been in Stranger Things from all the trailers. I feel like they take those Stranger Things kids and they're like, how do we make Stranger Things but a movie? Question. And then they <laughs> go on. Could, who can't be in Ghostbusters, Ethan? What's this actor's name? Finn Wolfhard. What? Finn, Finn Wolfhard? Finn Wolfhard, yeah. yeah. Could he have been Laurie? He's not old enough. He could have been young Laurie. He could have been young Laurie. He could have been young Laurie and I would have believed that they just Benjamin Button, Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently on the um, the IMDb list of, and I quote, uh, movies with food and drink in the title. And I have not found a cheese one yet. Okay. But uh, I will Good report Burger's back. close. Good Burger is close. Gouda Burger would work. Gouda Burger also just... sounds delicious. Good Cheeseburger. Uh, I'm trying to think of movies with cheese in the title. Uh, there was None a two, of... 2004 movie uh, starring people I've never heard of, directed by a person I've never heard of, called Ham and Cheese. Ham ampersand cheese. Oh, there it is. Um, there's a movie called, from 2006, called called I Want Someone to Eat Cheese With, starring Jeff Garland and Sarah Silverman. Yes, and then I found one more in... 2014 that is just called cheese heck yeah but also i want someone to eat cheese with definitely sounds like tinder bio worthy <laughs> i want someone that to eat is... cheese with uh there is nacho libre which is cheese adjacent 
That is cheese that adjacent. Is cheese adjacent. Yeah. As well as Mystic Pizza. Cheese adjacent, yeah. I would say that's less cheese adjacent. I would say nachos are more percent cheese than pizza is. Oh, don't get me talking about nachos because everything can be nachos. Ooh, go on. So so nachos go is really on. just like some sort of a chipular device. So, uh-huh. so something starchy that you can pick up with your hand and okay. something cheesy or creamy or syrupy on the top. Syrupy, huh? Right. Well, so this, this started back in, what was this? Like it had to be 2016. I was living with a roommate named Alexis and we drunkenly made nachos one time when we came home from a club. You guys had to unplug your Amazon device. I know that much. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Um, But so we, uh, we made nachos and then that just sort of became the thing that we would do anytime we went out is we would go back to the house and make nachos. So her family caught on to this and like sent her a news article that was, I ate nothing but nachos for a week. And so this woman made things like apple slices with caramel drizzle and called them nachos. Oh, it doesn't count. That's not nachos. Oh, yeah, but there's nothing That's... better than a non-traditional nacho. Like a tacho? Tachos are great. What's a tacho? It's tater tot nachos. Tater tot nachos? Come on, bud. Oh, but I thought so... you were going to tell me a taco nacho, and I was like, that's just a taco. Uh, all, yeah, all tacos are nachos. <laughs> Or all nachos are talking. I mean, that's that's called a naco, and that was uh, coined by Ron Stoppable. Um, okay, so why oh, does my brain know this? We're going to um, get back to, I promise you, we're going to get back to Little Women. I still have things to say about this movie. But this list is garbage, and I'll tell you why. Um, there are things, there are times when you should realize, like, colors are definitely, not colors, uh, uh, foods and stuff are definitely contextual. Uh, because, like, a clockwork orange is referring to the color, <laughs> not, not the, oh, no, it gets way worse than a clockwork orange but like that's referring to uh the color not the food but like howard the duck doesn't need to be on this list no i would agree honey i shrunk the kids probably not also should be on here um like like wings the movie it's about airplane pilots, not not hot wings. Oh, well, you know, the computer did a bad job picking those out. Oh, this is not a computer list. Oh, no. Somebody made this, but like a human. It's by I... Matthew-108. Okay, so I tried to find this article you told me about, and I keep coming up with YouTube videos of people being like, I only ate nachos for 24 hours. Like or I Mr. Only ate... Bean? Not really a movie about food. <laughs> Anywho, jumping back to finishing that story so that I don't get text messages from people being like, you started a story that you didn't finish on the podcast. Oh, I'm sorry, and I, I did not mean I did not mean to interrupt you in a story. No, you're fine. I just apparently have a bad habit of starting stories and not finishing them. Um, so well, you are a dungeon master, so you better fix that problem. <laughs> I mean, it's different when I'm the one dictating the narrative. <laughs> That's true. I'll grant you that. Before you get to your story, I'll have you know that my Firefox is defaulting to Bing, and I've got to fix that. But I'll let you tell your story while I do that. <laughs> Open for business, everyone. Come in. The weather's great. Um, But yeah, so just for the next week, we only made things that were arguably nachos, including like truffle fries with Parmesan cheese and a bunch of other stupid stuff that definitely isn't nachos. But we called it nachos because that's what you do when you're in your 20s and trying to be funny. Is it? I don't know. I, I do a lot of stuff in my 20s for the lulls. Yeah, I'm still in my 20s and I, I don't, I, I haven't made nachos uh, ever, I don't think. You never made nachos? Get the freak out of town. You've never put some cheese on top of some chips and thrown it in a microwave? No. I've done that. We used to do that all the time when we lived together. Yeah, I didn't make them. I did. I ate them too. But I like, I, cause I don't consider nachos if I heat the queso up and then dip the chip in it. That's not nachos. No, that's not nachos. Yeah. It has to be poured It's over. only technically nachos. It's like nachos for the moment. It's like a single serve nacho after it's been dipped. I will tell you that when Tyler and I lived together, we had a quesadilla maker. Um, I mean, I still have that quesadilla maker that was Tyler's, but that's weird. Yeah, you left it. Well, enjoy. I hope you use it well. I, I have, but like I used You're... to make, I used to make freaking everything into, into quesadillas when I had that quesadilla <laughs> maker. Like if I could put anything in a tortilla, it got quesadilla. <laughs> Tyler, literally, I, I just Google searched, I ate only nachos for a week. And the very first result is this article, which says I went on a five day nacho diet and I actually lost weight. Well, I Googled it. And the first result is woman hospitalized with botulism after eating nacho cheese from a gas station. And that was in May of 2017. So clearly with what? Botulism. Oh, botulism. Is that what, how you say that word that's spelled? Botulism? Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's the 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 condition that occurs when you're exposed to a ter- certain amount of the botulinum toxin. Oh, that's very neat of you, Ethan. 
You're ugh, nasty, nasty, nasty Lockjaw. That's like a Bond villain name. What, mm-hmm. Nasty Lockjaw? That was my Lockjaw. first. That was my first screen name. <laughs> was it? No. <laughs> what Obviously was your not. first right, screen name? Let's talk about Do you some remember? Small women. S- little women. Small. I liked the movie. I thought it was just delightful, except for the part with the with the girl dies. I mean, you yes. guys said you left this movie sobbing. I why did you cry? Leave. I didn't leave it, sobbing. Okay, when I, when and why did you cry? Did you Ethan, not I'll cry? Let you go ahead first. You cry at everything. You cry at dumb sh- stuff. What kind of dumb stuff do I cry about? All kinds of stuff. You cry. You talked recently about how you cry at like at like Folgers commercials and crap, like. Subaru, Subaru commercials. commercials. Oh man, don't talk and about you Subaru. Didn't, you com- didn't cry when Beth died. Not at all. No, I didn't care. Wild. Yeah, I That's was like, this person's crazy. barely been in this movie. Uh, so bye. No, wow. no, no, no. Which I cried when Beth died. I cried when uh when Mr. Lawrence was outside the house and he was afraid to go in because Beth wouldn't be there and he hugs Joe. Oh God, that was the hardest one. Chris Cooper playing Mr. Lawrence. I don't want to sit here and like extol the virtues of the single man that isn't Timothy Chalamet in this movie. Um, but like Chris Cooper playing Mr. Lawrence, who is a character that I can never remember is good or bad or not. He's good. He is good, but like he, he so we. We see the scene in every iteration of this movie where he like chastises Laurie for being useless, basically. And I guess he just needs to come into his whole thing about like, you know, respecting Laurie for who he is and, and the fact that his, you know, uh, his son left because of him or whatever. Um, but he's so sweet to all the girls and the family. And I always forget that that doesn't go away. And I'm always scared that he's just going to turn into a jerk one day. But Chris Cooper playing uh, Mr. Lawrence's movie was a highlight for me. It sounded like you were talking through a garbage disposal on my end. <laughs> it did, but I I got the uh, I got the general gist. Uh, Jordan, when did you cry? Um, So I cried when Beth died. <laughs> I'm sorry, through the garbage disposal. <laughs> Y'all sound um, great to me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> he was just talking and then just <laughs> like there's a spoon in there. <laughs> <laughs> one time one time I turned on the garbage disposal and we lived in port and it, nothing was getting disposed and it was making this horrible noise. And I like I, I'm always afraid to like stick my hand down in there, but I turned it off and stuck my hand in there and find it found a whole shot glass. <laughs> <laughs> that was like it was just bouncing between the top of the blade, like the the thing that the blade sat on, and the mm-hmm. like the flappy things, and it was just sitting there like. Pro tip: If something is stuck what? in your garbage disposal, turn it off and get in there with tongs. I just I just grab it. Nope. Yeah, I was under I no was, circumstances does my hand go down the garbage disposal drain, even when it's off. I was nope. to, I was like twenty one. Hmm. I had no no responsibilities back then. Young, I dumb, and full of stupidity. I was like I was looking One for moment. a missing shot glass in my garbage disposal. Do I really look like I have tongs at the ready to go and dig around in my garbage disposal with? Fair point. Um, that was also yeah. the first time in my life I ever had a garbage disposal. So mm. yeah, so I, I definitely cried when when Beth died, and I felt myself tear up a couple of other times. Um, but like every once in a while, when I'm at a movie, I'm a little bit self conscious of crying openly at that movie. Um, and I would say that that happens when a stranger sits next to me, and that happened at this showing. So yeah, no. a stranger sat next to me, and I just did not feel comfortable crying as much as I wanted to. I had the whole back row to myself, and I, I teared up quite a few times. Mm-hmm. I, I, I teared up quite a few times, but the only time uh, tears actually fell was was when Beth died. But like there there were a lot of other moments there, even with the burning of the book, got me emotional, because like, yeah, I felt that. And, and the other scene that I sort of unexpectedly um, felt emotional was when Amy was telling Lori basically she didn't want to be second place to her own sister. And yeah. just like that is such an empowering moment and like ignoring the fact that she still ends up with him in the end like she but she ended up with him on her own terms and that's what's important about that story yes it was very good is it like she had to make it clear that he has not done what he needs to do to deserve her and then he disappears and comes back Mm -hmm. he figures out his mistakes speaking of disappearing and coming back we should probably pause until tyler comes back now did he leave Uh, he left while i was still talking about crying at beth's death oh i don't know what he's talking about no we're just gonna keep talking i don't know what he's talking about I tear up. He tears up all the time in movies. He cries all the time in movies. I do not know how this movie didn't get to him. And I'm just going to keep talking about it while he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, it just didn't resonate with him. That's yeah, fine. This, this movie got me quite a few times. Um, Like when the dad came home. Man. That was so many, great. So many great scenes in this movie. There, It's just beautiful, beautiful storytelling. I think that this is definitely 
my favorite of the adaptations I've seen of this book that I've never read. <laughs> I probably won't read it either. I'm just going to be honest with you. Yeah, no, I, I I don't remember it being great. I don't remember really feeling much about it. Like, I, I know that I read it, and then I think I tried to read Little Men and just couldn't get into it, and I'm just like, cool, done with that, bye. I mean, it. it the, here's the thing is, like, it. Our, our standards these days are so high because there are just so many books, but, like, it would not exist in the canon the way it does if it was not like a an air quotes great book right like it clearly has a story that resonates with a lot of people whether or not the actual writing resonates with people as much but the actual story does and and you know we talked about that uh did we talk about that did i pretend to talk no i talked to mary clay about that on on talking about but mm. about like how a lot of these books written before the age of modern cinema you know nobody was really telling these people how to write and tell a story like especially in the 1800s like yes there were publishers but publishers weren't thinking about fiction the way we think about fiction now mm -hmm. um by any means like books you know they didn't write books for art back then they wrote books to sell in serials, and like Charles Dickens sold A Christmas Carol in like 26 parts to a magazine, and that's yep. how it was written. Yep. And that's just how things got written back then. It wasn't like, you know, they left him alone to just get a big... A whole story out of yeah, it. Yeah, a whole story out of it. Un poquito chicas. Chicas piquito. Pequeño. Pequeño. Pequeña. Si, pequeña. I speak Spanish, and is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. That translates to I speak Spanish, right? Mm. Ethan hablas espanol? Ah, uh, más o menos. <laughs> Ethan has a degree in Spanish. That doesn't mean I speak it the way I used to anymore. I'm very out of practice. It is something that I have the knowledge of, and if I got back, it, or I need to get back into practice, I could. But like I, you know, I would struggle if I went to a Spanish-speaking country right now. I think you would get much more acclimated more quickly than I would. For sure. But I also like I don't. I would not like. If I'm not the, mo you know, if I'm the most qualified person in the room, I'm going to have to find out by making sure there's not another more qualified person in the room than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never the most qualified person in the room ever. I think once at work before my current job, somebody was like, does anybody speak Spanish? And I was like, oh, I can kind of piece it together. I could not kind of piece it together. Yeah, that's the thing oh, is like, if, pobrecito. if a native Spanish speaker came up and started talking to me right now and like was asking for help with something, I would have to ask them to slow down. <laughs> yeah, uh, slow down, amigo. That's how you Ma say that. Mas despacio, which, which um, should be easy to remember now because despacito became so big and it literally means slowly. Oh, that's naughty. Ew. I'm sorry, have you not? Read those lyrics? Yeah, they no. are. They are, uh... <laughs> they are graphic. Yeah, they I mean, are it's, lovely. It's, it's Daddy Yankee. He's not exactly, uh, you know... Those girls don't just want, like, a tank of gasoline. I mean, <laughs> that's... <laughs> and now I have gasoline say, stuck Ethan? in my head. Thanks, Ethan. I mean, that's one of the, the all-time greats right there. Love that song. I'm a big Daddy Yankee fan. So they're not saying, give me more gasoline. Oh. Oh, baby. I mean, they are, but like it's it's <laughs> it's you know, how many songs these days? I mean, I guess uh, you know a lot of songs are pretty blunt these days, but um, they didn't pretty used blunt. to all be that blunt. <laughs> Just gonna let that one ride. Um, <laughs> sure, yeah. Well, Tyler, I'm sorry you didn't cry at this movie. I, there was not a single Subaru in the whole thing. Well, yeah, they didn't have Subarus in the 1800s. They had carriages. Prep the carriages. We got to go to the train station. I think we can catch him before I mean, the train leaves. A, that was such a great scene with the, just the whole family being like, her turning around and everybody being like, right there. Go after him. Come on. What are you doing? He loves you. You're his lobster. Even Mr. Lawrence, he's just like, uh, you know, I think that you probably love him. It would be in your best interest to chase that man. Um, yeah. How did you feel about Laurie's reaction to him when he first arrived? It went about as I would expect Laurie to be. Do you think Beth worries about Laurie? No, because I think Beth knows, as, as scary and sad as this is, I think Beth knows that Joe is never going to leave. I never, would never do that to her. It's the Eliza thing. Mm-hmm. We're like, your mans might not be faithful, but your sister is. Wait, That's what fair. about Beth? Beth's dead. Oh, not Beth. not Beth. Amy. Yeah. No, I don't think Amy, uh, yeah, I don't think Amy worries about it. But not because she doesn't worry about Lori, but because she doesn't worry about Joe. Correct. Correct. But also, like, I think that she probably just understands that she's kind of a bad <laughs> and, like, why would he leave? <laughs> I mean, Amy's His definitely, own Amy definitely has the whole, like, I'm the coolest one here and you need to figure it out thing down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
But she wasn't growing up. She really blossomed. Yeah. Yeah, but she knew she could be. Yes. She just, that's why she was so frustrated with Joe, because she felt like Joe wasn't letting her go anywhere or do anything. She was 13. What is she going to do? So this book was written in like the 1850s or whatever. In the 1810s, she would have been married by 13. Yeah. Wait, what is it? What war was? uh Civil. Civil War. The Civil War. That's the war Daddy yeah. Yankee was going to fight in. That's the war Daddy Yankee was going to fight in. Hey, you, you, uh, be nice to Bob Odenkirk here. That's that's <laughs> Saul he, Goodman. I'm sorry, Daddy Confederate. I, no, I don't know no, which he was side Daddy Yankee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but like that's a, that, I don't know. <laughs> Bob Odenkirk was a delight here in this little piece of cinema. Josh laughed out loud when he walked on screen, just because really? like he was so surprised to see that actor in this context. Oh, that was one of those moments where I cried when he, I teared up when when the dad came back. Oh, same, so hard. Definitely, and he just looks at them. I and he just... does the like, "You've grown so much, my little women," and I was just like, "Can you be my dad?" Are you a little woman? No, but he seems like a great dad. I don't know. He went off to fight the war. That's why he's Daddy Yankee. Yeah, um, he did the thing that his country demanded of him. How did you feel about Marmy having them give away their Christmas breakfast? Uh, I I felt like it was this weird thing where they were like, "We're poor, we have nothing." There was like, it was like the the rich middle class and and true poor. Uh, you know, as you sort of cast here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I felt like they were always like, "Well, we live in this tiny cottage." And I was like, "That's a pretty freaking big house. That's like thirty five hundred square feet." Yeah, but in I mean, your compared tiny to cottage. compared to to, uh, you know, Aunt May's or whatever her name is, Marge. Right. Compared yeah, to her wasn't. place, compared to the Lawrence's place. Like, they're poor compared to those people, but there's always somebody who has less. Yeah, so I I thought it was it was touching, and I knew that the girls were going to go for it when the mom was like, yeah, we're going to go. <sighs> the wow, mom was like, sorry. we're going to, I don't know where that came from. We're going to go out and help. I knew the girls were going to be like, yeah, we're definitely going to go do that, and we will sacrifice our Christmas breakfast for this, because they... They truly did have an abundance, and I think even yeah. they could see that in that moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, She's very good at teaching them the lessons that they needed to learn. Yes. Um, was there anything that Marmy did that you did not like? Feel like that's a loaded question. Yeah. What am I not supposed to like? Because I didn't see anything. But I I'm also a straight white man. I didn't. Did like... she encourage them all to get married? Nah, she did not. I didn't like that she made or told Joe, "Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Like, don't be mad at your sister." I feel like, like of all oh, of see... the things that she did, because she was phenomenal. Um, just, I mean, you already said at the beginning that she was Tyler. Um, and just in every single single scene I I was rooting for her but when she told Joe don't be angry at your sister for burning your book I was like mm, mm-mm she can be angry anger is a valid feeling yeah but you can't I fe- you can't I felt like can't yeah, the discussion angry. was not yeah it was it was not that you can't be angry it was that you need to find a way to resolve this like you, you, it's it is fine to be angry it is fine to be upset it is not fine to be mad at your sister for the rest of your life is how I saw that it's I mean, not even she fine can be to be mad for a, another day disagreed it's, yeah, it's, like, it's like 18 it's 1850 there was scarlet fever abound people died in the night for no reason just people went to sleep and didn't wake back up you can't you can't go to bed angry I mean, that, that's true today like emily it's, and i won't won't you, go to bed if we're fighting. I, I, I won't do it you can't go to bed mad at people having a fight it doesn't it's untenable ethan and i have this problem we'll occasionally get into a fight and like it has to be resolved before before we can go to sleep yeah even if it means like just me, you know, or one of us just, you know, owning up and be like, okay, I suck. You can be mad at me. I, you know, I'm not mad at you. I love you. We're good. If you're not good, I'll figure out how to make it good. But like, I need you to know that, that we're okay. Because yeah. like, I'm not saying she doesn't get to be mad. I don't think the mom's saying she doesn't get to be mad. I'm not uh, like, obviously she gets to be mad. She gets to be hurt, but hurt and mad are different things. And you have to tell your sister that you love her before you go to bed. Mm, that's fair. That's fair. Um, Cause like you never know when the last you never know what the last thing you're gonna say to somebody is gonna be yep accurate um <coughs> i was gonna say something and then i caught yep. i don't know so this is this is like you know uh, what does this what as as a straight white guy what did i miss you, what do you mean i don't know i just i i just feel like that there's something I'm, I'm sort of wondering what i need to have learned from watching this movie because like a lot of people right when it came out immediately were like i need everybody to go see this this is the most important movie that's come out this year this is the most important movie for like womankind that's come out this year or whatever not the most important but like a very important movie and i just want to make sure that I'm hearing the uh, the opinions of people that are not me about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to ask this question. I don't I even know what I'm trying to ask. I feel not woke enough to answer this question. I felt like watching this movie, it needed to communicate... Like, honestly, watching this movie, it needed to communicate to me that women are just as capable, if not more capable, at you know making their decisions about love, about art, about creation, about 
career as men are and it needs to come across totally normal and i feel like it did a good job of doing that i i agree and that was the thing i was trying to say without saying like because it doesn't seem like you know it's not an in your face i mean obviously like it, it is in your face in that in 1850 or whatever this was not normal no but it's not in your face for 2019 right i felt like it was appropriate in 2019 but i that that could also come from a place of like woke privilege where it's like watching this movie to me was like yeah obviously women should be upset and women should fight for these things uh but but i don't know are there audiences who watch this movie and are like you know what i know that there are, are teenage boys that watch this movie and, and see this movie and think a woman's place is in the kitchen i mean i think seeing movies about anybody who isn't like a superhero per se and it is just like the main character in their own narrative the the hero in their own story are meaningful and probably exposing young boys to women or girls who are the heroes of their own narrative and don't need a man to save them even though she still got with the guy in the end but different guy like it just helps you view other people more complexly Like, all of these characters felt very three-dimensional, whereas in some other narratives that are maybe box office busters are highlighting people who maybe are exceptional in some way. And I think that Little Women does a good job of, like, no one in this story is particularly exceptional, but we love them all the same. Yeah, feel good about that statement. (laughs) Perfect. Um, And I definitely, definitely, definitely think that, like, the earlier we can expose younger people, especially, um younger people that are male or male identifying or whatever that, that you know the, the sooner that we can tell people this is the norm that this is at least half of the coin is you know a good thing mm-hmm. um and like i there are plenty of movies that i don't think really try to teach anything plenty of them like i you know most of the movies that are made because there are uh, even to this day there are still plenty of movies that are made for straight white people about straight white people that just it doesn't it it, it, it does it's not that it lacks morals it just lacks a moral. Like what? What movie? What do you mean? I, I mean, give me an example. Do you, do you I mean do you really think that every movie that comes out is like some grand teaching moment? No, I definitely don't think that. But I think that every movie has some sort of theme, even if that theme is you know like the the rom com don't trust a book by a cover thing, which is like weird advice, right? Graphic designers. Yeah, but what do you work really hard on book covers? Uh, what do you learn from Paul Blart Mall Cop too? They made a second one. Oh yeah, they did. They got zero percent. I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen it. I, I I'm certain that the theme is very light and mild mannered, but I I could not speak to it but i'm sure it has some sort of theme to the story that's what i'm saying as like a as a straight white male i can spend all day watching movies that i'm not going to learn anything from yes i I would agree that you're but that doesn't mean that there's not a lesson being taught just a lesson that's been rehashed but it's also usually not a lesson that's really important to anybody else what do you mean like i don't think that there's anything powerful to be taught in more movies where like straight white dudes win stuff i mean i I haven't seen paul blart mall cop 2 i'm not talking about specifically (laughs) i know but like sometimes it's okay to just watch not all media has to challenge you in some way no, it's for okay sure, to just sure. watch something and enjoy it oh more and more the movies that i watch i find that i watch just because i enjoy do they um, also challenge you or or you tend to just go with ones that you enjoy well, and don't I, I think there are definitely i i do enjoy plenty of films that challenge me i enjoyed this and i, I don't know that i would say it challenged me but it is not it definitely would have at one point yeah and it definitely doesn't fit the narrative of the movies that i typically put on for fun but I, so as, as an example, I was scrolling through Twitter the other day and Mike Schubert tweeted about how he didn't like Harry Potter seven part two. And I was sitting there and I was like, man, I always try to have this woke feeling about the Harry Potter movies where I like, I didn't like the way they adapted this or I didn't like the way they adapted that. But when it comes down to it, I really like all eight of the like Harry Potter book adaptations to film. I, I just enjoy watching them. Every time I put them on, I'm like, man, these are excellent i am really enjoying this i feel the same way about all nine uh main star wars movies i feel the same way about i would say 20 of the what 23 marvel movies Ooh, like hold the- on let me guess which three are not on that list i'm gonna say thor Dar- dark world no i enjoy thor dark world oh, interesting. Uh, um I, probably I, the hulk the, yeah the, i genuinely the don't hulk like incredible is. hulk um and i'm trying to think of others that i don't i really like all of them maybe it's just the incredible hulk uh maybe like no yeah i like all the characters so even incredible hulk if it's on i'm not like how could someone ever watch this you know it's still i know i legitimately I, if that comes on tv i look at it and go why is this on tv <laughs> oh I, yeah if it came on TV, if they were like, here's a four hour showing of the Incredible Hulk with the commercials, I'd be like, oh no, we're not doing this. I'll watch anything else. I will turn the TV off and put on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
But uh, yeah, when it comes down to it, like I wish, I don't know that I wish, but I feel like we've been doing this for over two years now. And I, I definitely wax and wane on this, but I feel like I try to have this like real film critic -y approach to the movies that I like and that I dislike. But when it comes down to it, I just can't help but like the movies that I like. And I like them because I like them. And that's, that's how it's going to be. I think that's fine. I will say, okay, across fandom culture, there is only, I would say, yeah, I would say The Incredible Hulk and Crimes of Grindelwald are like the only movies that immediately come to mind and I'm like, yeah, these are garbage. <laughs> Harry Potter 6 is a bad movie. Sorry. It just is. I thought Harry Potter I, 4 was bad. Harry Potter 4 or 5 and 6 are just terrible. I, I When I saw Harry Potter 4 for the first time in theaters, I did not watch 5, 6, 7, or 8 until after all of them were out of theaters. Like, yeah, I, I did not go see any I of don't, them. I don't see the problems that people have with 4 the traditional problems that people have with them but I also like I will not if, if five or six are on I'm not gonna watch them it just those are they're bad adaptations of books that I love I yeah I, I just like all of them I wish I could agree with you uh and that's I just, fine but that doesn't like that doesn't change I I don't have to agree with you no you, you definitely don't I don't have to agree with but you there, no there's definitely a narrative that's coming up these days of like uh, of of you have to everybody has to enjoy it we're no, going, I don't think you we're, do. we're turning the other the, the the let people enjoy things stick is turning so far in the other direction that we're getting to like you not enjoying it is not letting me enjoy it. I do think when it comes to something like Star Wars, the polarizing opinions hurt more because people come out of Star Wars and they say things like, not only was this bad, but if you liked it, you are obviously dumb. Maybe it's some toxicity in the fandom. Oh, it's definitely that. It's definitely, it's not a maybe. That's, a, that's exactly what it is. I think the fan, it doesn't matter what movie they could have made. The people that didn't like it weren't going yeah, to like it. Fandoms breed no toxicity what. more than anything I else. Mean, not, it's not, it's not, not, sorry, that was the wrong way to say that. The, more than anything else film adjacent, the like fandom movies build the most toxicity. Not that the right. only thing that they build is toxicity. Um, no, I, I, I completely agree with that. But like any person who has an opinion about a, a piece of art, uh, assuming that that piece of art doesn't like deny the personhood of someone, uh, like, like, like isn't doing things that are actually harmful to people. If, if you have an opinion, a negative opinion about the thing and you think that someone must share your negative opinion or be a bad person or the flip side, if you like a thing and you think that other people must like it or they are bad people, then you're just a dick. Can I say that on this podcast? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah. Like, like your opinion is not objective. And, and this is actually something that I'm blatantly stealing from Scott and Icewander. Um, but like saying that there is a problem with something is objective. Saying that that problem impacted enjoyment to the point that it made the movie bad is not, no longer objective. Like, like it, it, it it's depends an, on what you mean by problem, but yeah. R right. But like, if, for example, with this movie, you said that there were some cinematography moments that took you out of the film. Some, that is an objective, like, like there were some cinematography mo decisions that uh, did not feel right in this context. But being able to say whether or not that impacted the overall quality of the film enough to make it a good or a bad film is oh, an and opinion I, and is not objective. I just want to go back and say that I don't by any means think that uh, that hindered my enjoyment of this film. It was more so of me looking at it and going like, man, this could have really been one of the all-time great movies. R retweet to that. Um, I did it, not think that you were saying that it made it a bad film. No, I know. I just want to make it clear in case I didn't make it clear earlier. Thumbs up Because like, that. At the, at the same time, like I said, I think that some of the scenes in this movie were some of the most beautiful things I've seen in a long time, and I'm very excited to see what Greta Gerwig continues to do. Ethan's in a garbage disposal again. Ethan is in a <laughs> so I said I am we I said I am excited to see what Greta Gerwig continues to do with the rest of her career. Oh, me too. Okay, me too. It is about that time for us to wrap bacon and eggs and record the hash browns. I did come up with an idea, but Jordan, you have to tell me if it would take too long. Okay. Could we in 30 minutes or less roll a DD &D character uh so breakfast food for uh little women i think we've got something delightful here uh that that will age well uh i'm thinking we're looking at uh man boy howdy does not not a lot of breakfast food ages well is waffles <laughs> do you can freeze them and retoast them but not eggs <laughs> Waffles work very well. Waffles do work very well. Timeless food. They were around in the 80s. They're around now. Probably going to make it a little while longer. <laughs> and there's infinite versions of it, just like Little Women. I just mean, like Little Unless Big you have... Waffle starts to go down the drain here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any reason why these irons 
can't continue to thrive. We find that both both Ego and Waffle House are combined, caught up in some sort of scheme. Some sort of scandal. I, I will say that I'm like 99% sure you guys did not give a binary review at the beginning. It's a one. Yeah, you have to see this movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. A, a, like it's a everybody one. has to see this well, movie. Well, we didn't give a binary review, but I did hawk some tickets. Come on down, see Little Women. It's very good. I'm gonna... <laughs> uh, Tyler, this is your character voice for d and <laughs> I'm dead. Oh, yes, adventurers. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the... You're gonna Fantasy s- brothel. You're going to start leaning real towards some Taz IP here in a second if you continue <laughs> down this road. I can hear you going there. Uh, okay, so I think uh, waffles. I'm good with waffles. Uh, let's put it on the big board. I don't know what's on the big board, but uh, let's find out. Did you put this into a spreadsheet? No, I did. Look at me. Look I'm at so you. Good. Look it's at not you better go. than Star Wars. It's not better than Star Wars. Is it better than Jumanji? I Welcome didn't to the see jungle. Jumanji. Oh, man, you're missing out. That's an underrated series. The new one or the not new one or the not newest one? The the the, the first one with with The, the Rock. Rock. Sexiest Man Alive 2018, I think. Probably. I don't know. 2017? Probably. I mean, he's... You're on the phone right now with Sexiest Man Alive 2027, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I know that Tyler didn't enjoy it as much as Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. I love Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. I know for but... a fact that he did not enjoy this as much. No, this is like the Moonlight thing. How on earth are we putting this with any of these movies? <laughs> uh, but I don't care. Wherever you want to put it, I, uh, I'm i not going to fight you. I'm not I looking don't... at a spreadsheet. Oh, Star Wars is first. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle is second. Klaus is third. Frozen 2 is fourth. Coco is fifth. I I definitely Uh, think it was better than Frozen 2. I don't think it was better than Klaus, though, is the problem. Well, there's that. There's a spot for that. Yeah, but I do think it was better than Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. I knew we were going (laughs) to run into this. Klaus is so good. Yeah. Do you uh, just need to replace Klaus? No, we're not. We're uh, not going to do that. We're, we're making a we're making a stand by leaving Jumanji up there. Yes, we're it telling a, people we are having a a moment here with that. You so. should go see this billion dollar movie. Anyway, uh, yeah, put it there. Put it above Frozen Two, below yeah. Klaus. Play us out, Tyler. Thank you so much for listening to Bacon and Eggs and Movie Lovers Podcast. Bacon and Eggs is a proud member of WBNE, uh, which is a, is a podcast network. You can find awesome, great shows like this one at WBNE.org. Like Hello from Elsewhere, or or Sincerely Us, or That's What I'm Talking About, which you can hear a preview for right here. Da-da-da! That's What I'm Talking About follows me, Mary Clay Watt, on my journey through Lord of the Rings for the very first time. Join me each week as I have fans on as guests so we can discuss the books one chapter at a time, and I can share all of my confused and completely inaccurate thoughts. Like this one. Although, I have to say, I did get excited for a brief second when Aragorn says, Come, father. I was like, oh my god, is Tom Bombadil Aragorn's father? (laughs) Before I remembered the whole son of Arathorn thing. Yeah, you know. But maybe Tom Bombadil is Arathorn. I mean, honestly, for all we know, he could be. (laughs) Yep. From WB&E, that's what I'm talking about. New episodes every Tuesday, wherever you get podcasts. Is Mary Clay the funniest? If you look at her Instagram story right now, which is definitely expired, it's just her laughing at her own jokes from the show. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> uh, I love that's what I'm talking about. Additionally, uh, pretty soon coming to WBNE, you could uh, you, there will be a Dungeons and Dragons show. DM Vire and Jordan Balky. Hello, Jordan. Hello. If you want to follow any of the three of us on social media, there's links for that in the description. I know you're not going to listen to what I say and then type it out, so just click on the link in the description. That's the way easier way to do it. Uh, what else do we say here at the end of the show? Our music is by Andrew Scott Bell. You can find his music at the link in the description below. And our graphics are by Vaishan Brandon at graphite.vmb. And you can DM him and he'll do graphics for you. They're not free, but they are very good. Jordan, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Super Awesome Jeb because I am huh. very humble. That's exactly right. And Jordan has been on Bacon and Eggs twice before and is still currently, at this moment, the owner of the number one episode of Bacon and Eggs. The most downloaded episode. Woohoo! You are Woo. rapidly, not rapidly, but very close to being caught by Anna Brisbane. Oh, uh, you know what? That's fair. I think I listened. I mean, I listened to her episode and I didn't listen to mine. So, you know. I mean, that's How fair. But it is like, you. it is it is a hair's breadth between you. Excellent.
Um, and it has been like that has been the case since those episodes came out and nothing has changed in over a year and a half thanks so much to Tori for for suggesting that I be on this episode yeah there was a Twitter interaction and then a text from Ethan being like whoa we have busy schedules buddy and then it turned out we actually yeah. don't we Tyler are all super just, available <laughs> Tyler was just like oh man totally everything and then you responded like yeah totally good and I'm sitting here like I don't have time to see a movie you know, <laughs> I found time but I was like Tyler can you just can you just like can you just ask me first <laughs> although I'm very glad that we did end up doing it because I probably wouldn't have seen this movie otherwise and we gave dollars to the film also thank you so much listeners as we close out 2019 uh this this December was the most downloaded month ever of bacon and eggs so thank you so much uh for listening to this show please continue to do so we very much appreciate it and tell your friends if you don't want to join our patreon then please tell a friend please please just one friend okay I've been Ethan Edgehill, he's been Tyler Carlin, and she's been Jordan Balky, and until next time, Arena Dirty. All men are trash.